just recently I made a video about the intriguing and mysterious church of St. John the Baptist that's now part of the museum in Yindrikruv, Radetz. The church is filled with strange wall paintings and designs that go back to the 13th century and which have puzzled many experts and self-made sleuths looking for the Templar treasure. Well, after our first visit, I sat down with my companion, Eva, and we talked about what we had seen. And that started to generate some thoughts and ideas. She had noted that the strange designs in the central archway and inside most of the windows seemed to run in layers of symmetric and non-symmetric designs. Hidden amongst those symmetric and non-symmetric rows of designs are the odd, strange and bizarre figures that have so entranced other workers. Now the artwork generally there does remind me a little bit of Rudolf Steiner and his thoughts and ideas on just basically living and dying nature. Growing, dying, growing, dying. But these designs, as you can see here, are definitely reminiscent of both floral designs and also of patterns that look to me like energy lines, energy vortexes, the kind of thing that Rory Duff has also noted at a Templar church in France, although different enough to be different. And it was as we were looking at these, and as I was thinking about the, the row of symmetric and non-symmetric, with the odd, strange, humanoid type figure thrown in for good measure, the grotesque images, so-called, I suddenly realized that these, some of these images resembled cymatic sound patterns. Basically, if you sprinkle some kind of sand on a, a piece of steel like this and then run a bow, at a certain frequency, certain patterns are formed. And these patterns are very intricate, very beautiful. And it seemed to me that some of these designs, under this archway in particular, resembled cymatic sound patterns. But others plainly did not. So what was going on here? What was the mystery and could we unlock a mystery? Was the mystery of the church here, the Templar church here, something to do with the knowledge of how to use sound in an energy vortex as three type 4 energy lines run through this church and their vortex is exactly under this archway. You can feel the power inside the church. We described it as flying. And here's one of those grotesque images. What does this kind of an image, why is an image like this in a church at all? There are just a few of these grotesque images. And when you start to look at them fairly closely, it's possible to see that potentially they are alluding to the chakras, the energy centers within the body. And this design in particular had me intrigued because here we have a naked man lying on his back, looking as if he's saying shh, pointing at a square above him. He's wearing a turban, a jeweled turban, which is above, the jewel is set above the third eye. Could it be that the tile that he's pointing to has some meaning or significance, I thought. 
The problem with cymatic sound patterns is it depends on the density, the surface tension, the materials that you're using. We don't know if the Templars knew anything about sound patterns like this, or I suspect that they did. And we certainly don't know how they were creating them, although I would imagine it would be voice with drums and sand. And that cymatic sound pattern, we played it on our return to the church. And it was like switching on a generator. It was 852 hertz. That's one of the solfeggio frequencies related to the third eye chakra. When I played this sound in that church, literally, it was like someone flicked a switch and every muscle, every fiber in my body suddenly was on edge. The power was shifted up a hundred or a thousand times over what it had been before. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. And this led us to believe that we might be on the right track. Now, Eva always told me that when she was in the church and another Templar church, she heard four notes. She's very sensitive and she would hear, she told me numerous times, as if someone was singing four notes. So could this be, there are four notes. And when we look at this particular grotesque image, is this not the solar plexus being defined? And is this man not tiptoeing very carefully upon potentially another cymatic image? And if we look for lookalikes for that cymatic sound image, we can actually find them. We find it's another solfeggio frequency, 417 hertz. Now, I haven't deciphered the other two notes, but I do believe we're onto something here. I think we've cracked the code. I do think that there are four notes signified by these grotesque images. The trouble is, is say, take for example, the one before this one, we can't actually see what the tile above looks like because it's up in a window at some strange angle. But we do believe that potentially we have cracked the Templar mystery of this particular church. We think that hidden amongst this symbolism are four key frequencies. These frequencies will be solfeggio frequencies. And when they are played in this energy vortex formed by these type four energy lines, we suspect that this magnifies the meditational result many, many times above what would be normal. We think that we've stumbled onto the answer to this mystery. And we think when we look at some of this artwork that we see these patterns actually repeated numerous times. Cymetic sound patterns. And it would have been very simple for the Templars to do this with a drum, some sand, and voicing the notes. So did the Templars know which four frequencies and in which order helped to have a greater meditational experience in an earth energy vortex? We think so, do you?